Hello, I'm Bookmark Tomahawk Productions, and today we will be talking about one of my favorite subjects of the 18th century, Indian trick goods and clothing in the mid to late 18th century. <clears throat> Without further ado, let's get started. <clears throat> when I tell you to picture a Native American in the 18th century, what usually comes to mind is an image of something out of the popular movie Last of the Mohicans, or maybe out of something from another documentary you've seen based mainly around the Seven Years' War. But what if I told you that that image <clears throat> that's so iconic to most people who know anything of this time period isn't actually that Native American at all? <clears throat> so let's have a bit of a background here. So as I said before, that iconic image that we see isn't actually that Native American at all. As a matter of fact, nearly everything we see the natives wearing is of European origin, and that has been modified to the taste of the Indians. Today, we will be going over some of the different trade goods, or items of clothing and whatnot, that you could expect to find being traded and sold at places such as forts and on tribute missions. <clears throat> so let's first start off with uh, knives and tomahawks. Ever since the first French fur traders began to trade with the natives in the 1600s, knives, axes, and tomahawks had been popular goods with the natives. Both the French and the English traded these items to the natives, and by the time of the mid to late 18th century, new styles of tomahawk had been developed, such as the popular pipe tomahawks, which we actually do see right here, and other styles of belt axe that did eventually become popular among soldiers and civilians during the Seven Years' War and the War for Independence about two decades later. Uh, and a good example of those belt axes is actually the Mohawk belt axe, which is the tomahawk that I have, and that will be appearing in more videos later on. If you're wondering, this knife here is actually an English scalping style knife. Uh, as the name implies, it was used for scalping, and knives of that style were quite popular amongst Native American warriors. So let's move into clothing. The clothing that we see Native Americans wearing in the 18th century is, as we said, of European influence. What exactly is of European influence? A great example of Indians wearing European influence clothing, or made clothing in that sense, is in this picture down below. So we have the Korean Indians here, <clears throat> and each of them has at least one native has at least one European clothing item on them. With this Native American here, you can see he's wearing uh, broadcloth Indian leggings, uh, broadcloth being a wool that they would have traded for from the English, and he's also wearing a match coat, which is basically a blanket that they wear in almost like a toga-like form. We see <coughs> uh, this very finely dressed gentleman here. Uh, he's wearing a red. He's wearing what appears to be an English officer's uniform of the early uh, 18th, uh, the early 18th century. Yes, uh, <clears throat> judging by the long coat and the baggy sleeves, as well as his crimson sash and silver gorget. Now, things like this you, you can expect to see on um, more prominent Indians, such as war chiefs and whatnot, <clears throat> and you won't expect to see it on just the average warrior like we have here. Uh, on the far right, <clears throat> we see this Native American warrior here is actually wearing a capote. A capote is another thing that they would have made out of blankets. Uh, it's a very much a winter sort of clothing item. Uh, a lot of colonists actually ended up wearing these, and they were very popular with soldiers on both sides during the American Revolution. Uh, <clears throat> but we see here that he's just wearing a plain uh, green capote meaning he probably just got it from a blanket and then stitched together with sinew. Um, <clears throat> and now we move on to supplies. In order to get the various tribes of Native Americans to aid either the English or the French in battle, both sides in the French and Indian War used the promise of gunpowder and lead for making ammunition as rewards for helping them fight one another. The Natives, always in need of proper supplies for their guns, often agreed to help fight under these promises. Um, this is true, actually. Um, <clears throat> we have examples of forts such as Fort Dobbs, which is actually garrisoned by North Carolina provincial soldiers or Americans in service of the English army. 
Uh, they actually have a they actually have a thing <coughs> in which Cherokee Indians are the local tribe there actually were permitted to draw supplies such as gunpowder and ammunition or lead balls as ammunition. <coughs> so I believe that concludes our video today. Uh, thank you for watching. As always, I'm Fort Market Tomahawk Productions, signing out. Old England of folly and sin By the Chatham and Camden Mary Burke, Wilkes and Glynn Not content with the game act They tax fish and sea And America drenched with hot water and tea